guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. As if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon, today I'm coming back at you with another Let's Play episode of Glory Hound. That's right, Glory Hound is back with issue number two, A Whale of a Tale. I can't wait to jump right back into it, y'all, so sit back and enjoy as I entertain you. Let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's friggin' go. Alright, Whale of a Tale. Issue number two, Whale of a Tale. Somewhere underwater. Oh, oh dear. Oh yeah, that's right. That gang. Oh my god. Wow, that is a detailed sprite. Holy. Well, well, well. If it isn't the catch of the day, come swimming home at last. Maybe more piratey sounded. Not like you'd have a dirty uniform, Ishmael. What gives? Had a rough go of it out on the seven seas? Don't give me your... I am. Um, cease your blathering, you big ball of feathers. I blathered because I care, me hearty. He had us all worried, truly, even the cap'n. Of course, and we took a gander at the news. The bloody news? Do you mean the cut? Do you mean the? Do you mean to say the cap'n knows? I personally understood why you'd be wary of a couple of. Be wary for a couple days. Be away for a couple days after, of course. Running from the law ought to be quite difficult to those stubby little legs of yours. Why, you? But breaking our code of honor in the first place, Oshera. That's breaking his old heart. Why don't you quit poking your beak into places that don't belong before I pluck your feathers off one by one and stuff them in a pillow? And just ha and just how be you making f those f those and just how be you making those funny squiggly sounds? Oi! You touch my feathers and you you'll be sorry, fish breath. Asshole! <laughs> Asshole! <laughs> Dunce! Landlubber! Jesus. Squawk! He did not just say that. I'll have your head on a pike, you hear? I'll shut your bakes, bu- I'll shut your bakes, both of yous. Oh, wow, he's huge. He's probably a whale. Boss! <clears throat> Dearest Captain, whatever do you need? Ishmael, me laddie, I thought I made myself very clear when I took you in. Pardon me, Captain, but I am still trying to get the swearing thing under control. Old habits die hard. Har har har! You're hoisting the wrong sail, boyo. Cursing be one thing, but this here crew don't take kindly to feckless, unprovoked violence, see? Holding a little old lass at gunpoint like that don't reflect too kindly on us men of the sea. Any lesser captain would settle for no less than hanging you up by your fins or having you keel hauled. You're really in for it now, Ishmael. Ah, but seeing this is your first jaunt over the great line of Syndicate rulebook, the great cap and willing to be let this one go. But really? Really? On one condition, lad. See, I got a grand job planned, absolutely grand, and I need all hands on deck for this one. And seeing as the big guns are in the pillory, that unfortunately means you lot. A word of warning to the weak and wary, though. Cross Cap and Ahab again, and Keelholland will be just a start. Thank you, Captain. You won't regret it, I swear on me heart. Don't go thanking me yet, you sorry sack of scales. We'll pull this one off, and every cent you earn's gonna go to fixin' that little old lady's store. Until then, you'll be swabbing the poop deck. Are you kidding me? I wasn't even the one who smashed up the place. T'was that blasted hound and his spotted friend that did the deed. Ah, that would have, it wouldn't have happened if you listened to me for once in your life, Sonny. Now would it? Oh, who is messaging me? Don't message me right now. I am busy. Okay. Okay. You said it, Cap'n. Um, Cap'n, who's the new fella in the corner over there? Our ticket into the place we're fixing to loot. What was your name again, lad? Oh. Oh, oh, he looks familiar. Camo. August Camo, at your service. Camo? No. Camo. He's right. You be saying it wrong, Ishmael. Obviously, it's Kamwa. It's Camo. Why does no one get it right? Stop wagging your tongues. Get over here and listen good. We got a job to do. Glory hounds. Sweet. Ah, looking forward to this. I'm on the verge of collapsing. My bones are aching. My vision's blurry. But it's because of that I'm just exhausted because my body can't take much more punishment. I don't know. 
But every time I hit the mat, it gets a little comfier and just a little harder to get up again. Oh my. Again. The bird looming over me looks none the worse for wear. Of course he doesn't. I haven't been able to hit him once, after all. Even after he promised Raul he'd go, Raul, 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 he'd go easy on me. I was doing like a kind of a Russian. Are you just going to lie there with mouth agape like a baby bird? Give me a moment. This is life or death situation, Duskhound. Criminals are not going to wait for you to make return flight from Dreamland. I, I just, I, I think I just, I just sprained. <laughs> I pushed myself off the mat and immediately yelped in pain, falling right back down. My entire body. And you will help keep doing so if you don't need to guard, do not keep guard up. In hand-to-hand -hand combat, paying attention to opponent is as important as punching and kicking. If you do not, he shakes his head, there are worse things than bruises. With all those scars, I'm inclined to believe him. I sit up straight, panting all the while. How are you not tired yet? I'm like half your age. Body is temple. Take care of it in early stage, and in old age it will take care of you. Your body might be a temple, but mine's more of a garbage disposal. And see me as a sanitation company. You must learn discipline. I carefully weigh my options. All right, promise not to break any bones? I'll do my very best. I get back on my feet and assume the stance he's been trying to teach me all morning. Keep right here being assume. I don't know what I'm doing. All right, hands raised at eye level. Shoulders up, chin tucked, legs wide, knees slightly bent. Reminds me of the boxing lessons I took as a kid. Of course, those didn't prepare me to fight a deadly bird with more battle scars than my dad's old car, but I doubt anything could. Your form is... He pauses, scrutinizing me. Adequate. Coming from him, that almost feels like praise. He takes a similar position himself. Fighting is very much like dancing. All about anticipating your partner's actions and reacting in turn. Then when guard is down, you strike. Not sure I've ever seen a dance that involved, uh, striking. This game has some awesome music. Master Brevard said similar thing long ago. Did you train him too? He nods. For years. He was interested in learning. Dedicated. Very insistent on talking. Much like you. Made funny sound when hitting Matt. Much like you. He chuckles. I'm so used to him being serious at this point that it feels an unnatural. Like a sound that should simply not exist. You trying to get me angry? I'm trying to make you punch instead of talking ear holes off. Alright, you asked for it. Here it comes! Dusk! Punch! I take a swipe at his smug little face. Without skipping a beat, he catches my fist with his claw, locking it in place. I try yanking it away, but he's got a firm hold on it. God, he's strong. This man can fold me like a chair. Tell me, tell me, what went wrong? I, uh, hesitated? No, we do not announce attacks. Master Brevard may be living in Cartoon World, but we fight real criminals. <laughs> That's was so funny. Like, ah, I'm announcing my attack, and it takes you by surprise. Alrighty. So why is not to scream attack names and faces? Noted. Good. Can you, uh, let go of my hand now? He narrows his eyes. No. Pretty please? Prettiest of pleases have no effect on me. Opponent immobilizes your arm. What do you do? I throw another punch with my free hand at that, but that one gets snatched up by Milo as well. He wasn't even looking at it. Correction. Both arms. <laughs> he stares me down while I wriggle in place. He's enjoying this. Clock is ticking. Alright, fine. If he wants to play dirty, I can play dirty too. I take a deep breath and pull back my leg and then bring my knee forward as hard as I can right into his groin. It's like hitting a brick wall. He doesn't flinch, but he does let go. I stagger backwards. Good thinking. An effective, but good start. I look up at him. How did you not... What? Feel pain? Internal testicles. Species and anatomy of opponent is very important. Everyone has different strengths and weaknesses. Not the answer I was expecting to hear. Well, at least I wasn't expecting him to be this blunt about it. What are yours? He taps his beak. Strengths. Carrion crows of shark beak. Made for tearing flesh from bone. Evolution dulled nature, but not beak. Exercise caution when aiming for head. He pauses. 
but not want you to lose fingers. Whoa, morbid. Have you ever had to... No, I'm not barbarian. I'd still be keeping an eye on that beak of his. I hope you're not always this easily frightened, Duskhound. Just wondering how Rael turned out to be so happy-go-lucky when you're over here warning me about folks who might chomp my fingers off. Master Brevard is idealist. To him, if he cannot perceive danger, it does not exist. He's lucky to be skilled and resourceful. He shakes his head wistfully. Still has much to learn about self-preservation. You have that in common. So why aren't you his sidekick? You'd be way more helpful in a fight than I could ever hope to be. He looks away for a moment, knitting his brows. I'm expecting him to explain, but he stays silent for a few long, agonizing moments that, that give me the impression I just gravely offended him. I'm only fit enough to teach, not to fight. I think this might be a sensitive topic. Hey, for what it's worth, I think you're an excellent teacher. He focuses on me again. Despite his stern expression, there's a funny little twinkle in his eye. I am best instructor in Batavia. I will teach you everything I know. You're not allowed to die under my tutelage. I don't know whether that's a promise or a threat. In turn, I only ask only one thing. Shoot. Keep Master Brevard safe where I cannot. That's what I'm here for, right? I mean it. He may be smart inventor, but he is not brightest bulb and crayon box. I'd correct him on the idiom, but I don't want to end up on that mat again. I didn't know you two were so close. I just figured you were his butler. I have many things. Bodyguard. Teacher. Mixologist. Legally allowed to officiate weddings. Butler is one of them. How far back do you guys go? 23 years. And it's been a hell of a ride. Is the man himself. I hear the hiss of the automatic door shutting behind the Rottweiler as he struts into the room with the biggest of grins and a large, colorful notebook. The amount of stickers on it would make an elementary school kid jealous. Is that glitter? Oh wow, it is. A container's worth at least. Sorry I'm late. I had some work for the company to attend to. How's our new recruit doing, Milo? About as well as you did on first training day. Youch. No broken bones as of yet, however. Well, that's good. Broken bones? It's a long story. Long story is he stubbed toe on way out of training hall. Had to spend several days in infirmary. Anyways. He waves the notebook at me. It's actually kind of adorable. He stubbed his toe. <laughs> We have something very important to discuss. I could honestly use a break for a week. Teach doesn't seem to think I've earned one yet, though. I can see Milo twitching ever so slightly from the corner of my eye. But what about my training? The crow lets out a sigh. What appear we are done for today? If the past week has been any, been any indication, I think I'm in for another five consecutive hours of hearing about Raoul's hero heroic deeds. Training is important, but so is presentation. I tilt my head. Presentation? The people need more than just protectors, Spot. What they need is heroes. Icons. What they need is a symbol of justice that will strike fear into the heart of every criminal in the city. I think I know where this is going. Am I getting a costume? You can't fight crime wearing slacks, Duskhound. His grin widens as he slams a notebook on the nearest flat surface. He's even more excited than he was the other day during my five-hour orientation. I'm not getting a gimp suit, am I? I took the liberty of creating some costume designs befitting your new identity. So that's what he's been so busy with this past week. No wonder he left out all the fundamentals of my new job up to Milo. Did you design your own outfit? Sure did. It's my pride and joy. Oh no. I figured that'd be more Milo's area of expertise. I can hear Milo shuffling behind us, putting away our training equipment. I look in his direction. He seems to be dreading this just as much as I am. I made some revisions for combat effectiveness. The design itself is Master Brevard's. He insisted on it. Oh no. You're not getting a carbon copy of mine. I believe a proper outfit should bring out your own unique qualities. That does nothing to ease my anxiety. Just keep in mind none of those are final. We can always make a few little tweaks here and there. Thank God. All right. All right, show me what you've got. Raul leans in close to me, his shoulder touching mine. He's wearing the same cologne as last week in Mrs. De Bruyne's store. He opens his notebook and starts flipping through the pages. They're all filled with colorful drawings and pencil markers and crayons. Excuse me. The first few pages seem to be filled with prototypes for weapons and gadgets. Soon enough, he gets to the fashion doodles. He's going through them pretty quickly, but they honestly don't look too bad. He's got an eye for style, at least. Now, seeing as you're new to this, I figured we'd give you plenty of protection and armor, you know, to keep you safe. That sounds good. I may survive my first field assignment after all. He lands on a page with a drawing, with a drawing of me wearing... Oh, no. 
What is this? I was thinking something that's on the more defensive side while still terrifying your adversaries. That is the most over-the-top and ridiculous armor design I've ever seen. Um, wow, this is quite... something? Right? How do you like it? Personally, I love the pauldrons. He eyes me excitedly, like a kid showing off their latest art project to a parent. And I don't want to hurt his feelings, but this isn't going to go on the fridge anytime soon. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, I uh, like the thingies on the boots. You mean the axes? Yeah, the- wait, those are axes? I mean, uh, don't you think it's, uh, maybe, you know, a bit much? He runs a paw across his chin. Hmm. I suppose it might be just a tad tricky to move in or to move around in, yes. Not to worry, though. I've thought of everything. I had a feeling you might feel this way, so I took the liberty to draft a few alternate designs. Mind you, they're slightly less developed and refined. This next one has fewer bells and whistles and should let you move more freely. Whew, he's a little worried, but thankfully he's got some self-awareness. I'm sure the next one will be a lot less... Huh. Minimalistish. A lot less... a lot less. Full stop. What even is this? Um... Now, this one doesn't have quite as much protection. How does this offer any protection? Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, bring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or tip if you can, it always helps. Don, uh, Glory Hounds is back. Yes, very happy. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.